This past week, Elon Musk and Twitter removed all of the legacy verified check marks. So anyone who was verified the old way, which you know validated who they were, um, sure it was a little exclusive, but most importantly it was, so if you go on the platform, you know who you're seeing is actually who they are and what they're saying is coming right from them. And I think Elon Musk and the Twitter team just completely miscalculated how people valued blue check marks. They instead turned it into a way to monetize Twitter. But the thing is, people weren't really so into buying it so they could have it. It was more so if you were verified, it kind of said you were someone who was important. And not only important, but you, you're important enough that if someone goes to your profile, people need to know that you actually are who you are. This could be a news organization, journalists, uh, businesses, sports teams, athletes, celebrities, all people that were important enough from the standpoint that you should know that it's them who's saying what they are saying and you are seeing the real account. Maybe you don't think they're so important you know, status wise or whatever, but nevertheless, you go to their platform, you go to their page and you wanna make sure that it's them who's saying it. Like if you go to Nicki Minaj's page, you want to make sure it's Nicki Minaj. You go to the New York Times, you want to know it's the New York Times. You go to Fox News, it's Fox News. It doesn't matter who it is, but you get the idea. However, things got so bad that Elon Musk started giving away Twitter Blue for free under the guise that it looked like people were actually buying it, which is extremely misleading. And of course, he didn't clarify this because he doesn't talk to the press. Obviously, it's a bad look. Um, and like I said, just entirely misleading. It's creating, you know, trying to create that FOMO vibe, like, oh, look at all these celebrities getting blue check marks now. They're buying Twitter blue. I should buy Twitter blue. So upon removing the legacy check marks, which was, again, just a bad idea, if you want to have Twitter blue as a premium service, like, so you can get your increased visibility and a check mark, you know, whatever, fine. If people want to buy into that, they can. And some have, it's, it's made $11 million. It's not like no one has bought it. It's just clearly not gonna be the thing to save Twitter if he thought it was. But the problem he ran into is by removing the legacy check marks is that he completely overestimated the value that people put into it and kind of watered down his own product in the process. However, after removing the legacy check marks, there was only a net gain of 28 subscribers from people who had legacy check marks. So there were specifically 19,469 people who had the legacy check mark and subscribed to the Twitter blue. Afterwards, there was 19,497. And it's not a typo. Someone was tracking this. His name is Travis Brown. You can look it up. And nobody cared. Rich Eisen, you know, a sports personality was on air and kind of left it off. It's like, all right, well, I'm not paying Elon Musk money for a check mark. Um, LeBron James, Stephen King, William Shatner, he actually went public and said he was, you know, paying for them. Them keep, or he bought them their, their check mark. And again, you know, it's misleading because if someone doesn't see that and they see LeBron James is verified, they know the check marks are being removed, all of a sudden you're creating this, you know, vibe that, oh, LeBron b bought it. He did say it, but again, you know, he put it in a tweet and, you know, if you saw it, then you know. If you didn't see it, then how could you possibly know that? So you had people like rapper Ice Spice, uh, who had over, a, you know, a million of followers, and she goes on and she sees she's verified and she's like, who's subscribing to Twitter Blue? <laughs> she didn't pay for it. So it was really confusing. And she wasn't the only one. There were a lot of people and, you know, Musk replied with a, a meme of a crying baby. And honestly, I think the crying baby is kind of him right now because his idea just literally it went down the drain. And as we all know, Twitter has lost half its value. It's valued at you know, 20 billion when he bought it for 44 billion, which was overvalued anyway. And now it's lost half its value. But moving on, you know, just to the point that you know, when Elon Musk first bought Twitter, he said he wanted to make it a classless system. There were, you know, lords and peasants, and that, that's why he wanted to do Twitter blue. 
And again, you know, he could have just let people keep their legacy check marks. He didn't have to get rid of them thinking that all these people were going to buy them. You know, 400,000 people who had legacy check marks were going to all of a sudden subscribe to Twitter Blue and double his income from 11 million to 20 million in a day. And of course, that would look great, but it was not necessary. And if people want Twitter Blue and to pay for it, okay. But even people who do pay for it, constantly get humili hum humiliated on Twitter for paying for Twitter. Um, and not only that, but there is like a wave of people just blocking people who pay for a Twitter and have Twitter blue. They can just get blocked, even though it's supposed to give you increased visibility. And all of this has completely, you know, ruined the For You page, the, you know, the, the main timeline that you're following for you. Because now all you see are people who pay for Twitter. Because if you don't pay for Twitter, you don't get that extra reach. You don't get seen in comments. Basically, if you use the platform, you're at a disadvantage doing it. So this class system that was not supposed to be there now is there because now you're saying, well, people who are paying are rewarded. And that is creating a class system. Removing the check mark didn't make any sense. And it, it just, I think, just creates confusion. Again, some people got it back because they have a million followers. But again, it's odd. And... The, kind of the other point is like, even if Musk wants to create a classless system on social media, there are, there's a whole class system in the whole, in the real world. Like there's always been there and it's just the way it is. Some people are more famous. Some people have more followers. Some people get seen more. Uh, some people are one of the richest men in the world. Elon Musk is in a class himself that only a few people are in. Um, you know, how many people have $250 billion at their disposal that they can buy a $44 billion company and, you know, get investments from all these high profile investment companies and bank loans of, in billions of dollars that, that can buy it. So you have a person in the highest social class and monetary class buying a platform for $44 billion and then telling everyone there's not going to be a class then removes the check marks from people to make it an even playing field and allows people to buy it for an even playing field. And then says the people buying it now have priority over people who don't, which is creating a class. Again, it doesn't make any sense. And the fact that the blue mark, blue check mark isn't exclusive anymore took away from the whole aura of the blue check mark to begin with people built their platforms and notoriety to one day hopefully get a blue check mark and it was something to work for and I, I don't think people you know entirely minded that and again you could have had a premium service while keeping the old legacy check mark you, you you can make it a different color you you, you could literally do anything you want to separate your premium service from people who are just legacy verified or just keep people, allow people to keep getting verified through the old way because again, notoriety, whatever. Hey, maybe if you subscribe to Twitter blue, uh, you know, you get on the radar of someone who's going to pull the trigger on you getting the legacy check mark. And then maybe you don't have to pay for Twitter blue or you get it at a discount that there, there had to be so many ways just, to work in a premium because, because we understand like social media is freemium in itself. Like your, your, your reach and engagement is always going to be throttled because of the way the algorithms work. You're never going to reach everyone in your audience who follows you or always go viral. It's never going to happen. So again, if you want to create like that extra step up where like, Hey, if you want to pay a little bit to get a little bit more cool, gets access to some new features. Great. But why remove the thing that made everyone go to Twitter in the first place, which was, I want to go see what this person is saying. And now people who are new to the platform or just using it might not even know, like they're looking at the real page. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo was unverified for a whole day. If you were just scrolling through your page and you saw Cristiano, maybe it wasn't because previously when Twitter Blue first came about, everyone was creating fake accounts with celebrities and athletes. It doesn't make any sense.